Number 9. The Inga Stone Have you ever heard of the Inga Stone before? The Inga Stone could be anything. Evidence of a lost civilization in the Amazon, proof of forgotten advanced technology, a message from outer space, or a warning from ancient humans. It's likely one of these options, but scientists are helpless to say precisely which one. The stone is shrouded in mystery, standing in the waters of Brazil's Inga River. It's a massive stone that measures about 150 feet long and is covered in unidentifiable symbols. Its origin dates back at least 6,000 years, maybe even more. And while it isn't the only strange stone covered in weird markings in this part of Brazil, it's unlike the rest. The level of craftsmanship is unparalleled, while the style itself is entirely unique. One of the men who's taken a serious interest in the Inga Stone is Gabriel Baraldi, an archaeologist and researcher who started investigating the Inga carvings around 1988. He's examined almost 500 symbols that have been found drawn within caves near the Inga Stone, and according to him, many of the carvings are representations of celestial features. He believes he's identified the constellation Orion scrawled on a cave wall, as well as fairly accurate depictions of the Milky Way. Other pictures are obviously of animals and food, but most of them are pretty strange. Professor of Greek theology Ignatius Rollum once compared the Inga carvings to Phoenician carvings from ancient Greece. But other groups have compared the similarities to artwork found on Easter Island. Unfortunately, though, there's no evidence that can link the stone to a particular civilization. Scientists can only guess who crafted the stone and covered it in bizarre pictures. It may have been a nomadic civilization moving through the jungle, or it could have been an advanced group of people who disappeared. It may have even been a group of primitive humans who had contact with extraterrestrials. There are also people who think the Inga Stone is a message from space. And now for number 8. But first I wanted to give a big shout out to Chuck's channel and Antique Freak 3128 Thanks so much for watching and supporting OE. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number 8. The Neolithic Mass Grave Archaeologists in Slovakia discovered a highly unusual mass grave at the Neolithic site of Vrable. The site was inhabited about 7,250 years ago, and scientists call the culture who lived here the Linear Pottery Culture. It's a fairly boring name, but it was given to the group because of their unique pottery work. At the peak of this civilization's power, researchers believe there were three main settlements neighboring one another. There would have been about 80 houses in total, making it one of the biggest gatherings of humans in the world at the time. And when researchers dug up the mass grave, they were shocked to find 37 skeletons without their heads. The headless humans were buried in a ditch surrounding one of the villages. It was a huge surprise, because plenty of other mass graves have been found belonging to the linear pottery culture, but none of the others held decapitated skeletons. This is evidence of a large-scale massacre, which may have been the end of the entire civilization. And researchers think it happened around 5100 BC, although they don't know why. They do have some guesses, though. Archaeologist Martin Furholt has suggested that there may have been a social upheaval. These people could have been slaughtered in some kind of ritual to try and regain control of whatever terrible thing was happening to their society. But as far as anyone knows, none of the heads belonging to the decapitated bodies have been found yet. Number 7. The Head Cone Mystery You may have heard about the cone-headed people of ancient Peru. Archaeologists have found countless skeletons with unusually elongated skulls in the South American country, which some think are alien bodies. One of the most popular theories surrounding the cone heads of Peru is that they were alien-human hybrids. But what a lot of people don't realize is that cone-headed people existed all over the world. They were in Asia, Europe, North America, and even Egypt. For years, scientists have been trying to understand the meaning of the cone-headed people in ancient Egyptian art. Everywhere you look across Egypt, from temples to palaces, there are strange pieces of artwork showing men and women with cone-shaped heads, just like the bodies found in Peru. These images are scrawled on coffins, and they're beautifully detailed on papyrus scrolls. They're often depicted in divine rituals and partaking in royal feasts. But the purpose of the cone heads has eluded archaeologists because, until recently, they never found physical evidence of such a person. It was always believed that cone heads were symbolic representations of the divine, 
much like halos hovering over the heads of saints in Christian artwork. But now everything has changed. An international team of archaeologists found the first physical evidence of a person in Egypt with a cone head. Only this wasn't a person with their skull deformed into the shape of a cone. Instead, archaeologists found a strange head accessory that was worn to give the illusion of having a cone-shaped head. The discovery was made in a cemetery in the ancient Egyptian city of Amarna, which was founded in the 14th century BC. The individual with the cone-shaped accessory was likely an elite member of society. But now that scientists know these accessories were real things worn by real people, they need to figure out why. And to do that, they have to figure out why so many other cultures were obsessed with making their heads into the shapes of cones. If this was only the Egyptians doing it, maybe it would make sense. But this was a worldwide trend. People all over the globe were obsessed with building pyramids and having cone-shaped heads. The only thing that really makes sense is that the ancient cultures were emulating something or someone. It could be that they were trying to copy a race of extraterrestrials who visited in ancient times. Perhaps these aliens had pyramid-shaped flying machines and cone-shaped heads. Then again, it's just a theory. Number 6. Mystery Island Coins A pair of silver coins were just found on a remote island in the Baltic Sea. The coins themselves aren't particularly special. One was minted during the reign of Roman Emperor Antonius Pius, who ruled Rome from 138 until 161 AD. His head is seen clearly stamped on coin along with a few Latin characters. The other silver denarius was minted during Trajan's reign between 98 and 117 AD. There are plenty of these coins scattered around the world, making them only slightly rare. The real rarity here is that they were discovered on an uninhabited island in the middle of a chunk of water between Sweden and Estonia, and scientists don't have the foggiest clue as to how the coins got there. Johan Ronby was one of the archaeologists involved in the discovery of the coins. He and his team found them using metal detectors while strolling along the beach of the island. There are no historical records of any settlement on the island or any voyage to the water-locked landmass. The only thing archaeologists can think of is that the coins were part of the cargo of a wrecked ship. A Roman voyage far to the north may have been ruined in a storm, then the coins washed up on the beach. They may have even been discarded by Norse traders who stopped off on the island to explore it. Unfortunately, there's no real way to say for sure. Number 5. The Astral Tombs There are some unusual graves that were found in the ancient Alula oasis of the Saudi Arabian desert. It was here where the Nabataean civilization thrived up until their defeat at the hands of the Romans around the 1st century AD. The Nabataeans were the creators of Petra, and other fabulous desert cities. They made a great amount of wealth by trading between the east and west, with camel caravans moving in and out of their cities in the desert. All kinds of amazing things have been found from the days of the Nabataeans, but these graves have been labeled particularly unusual. The tombs were carved into the side of sandstone cliffs. They also appear to be aligned with the rising and setting of both the sun and the moon during the solstices. Ten different ancient languages were discovered here, showing how hugely diverse the Nabataean kingdom was. Another recent discovery here is something archaeologists think could be the oldest animal sacrifice site in the world. Jonathan Wilson, an archaeologist who's been working at the site for some time, said a lot of evidence has been found that numerous beasts were killed at the site. Beasts like the prehistoric aurochs, the extinct ancestor of the modern cow. Carbon dating showed that these creatures were sacrificed at the site around 5200 BC. The ancient cattle are proof of extremely old sacrifices, but they're also proof of how green the desert used to be. The Oryx never would have lived in the modern Saudi Arabian desert. These days, it's too hot and dry for most life to exist. But 7,000 years ago, this place was lush and green enough that cows wandered around freely. Number 4. Bald's Leech Book Scientists are obsessed with a book that's currently being stored at the British Library. The book is the only copy currently in existence, and it was written around the middle of the 9th century. It's called Bald's Leech Book, one of the earliest known medical textbooks penned in the English language. The book contains recipes for various medicines and remedies, some of which are absolutely insane. For example, one recipe says that you can cure insanity by killing a dolphin, skinning it, then making a whip out of its skin. They believed by simply striking the patient with the dolphin skin whip, his madness would go away. Other recipes in the book, however, have proved to be an asset to modern medicine. 
In 2015, scientists at the University of Nottingham were able to recreate a salve that was effective for killing the infection MRSA, which is notoriously resistant to modern antibiotics. Clearly, ancient Anglo-Saxon physicians had some serious skill when it came to making potions. For every effective solution in the book, there are three more that make zero sense. To cure a headache, the book gives instructions to smear honey and beetroot juice on the patient's head, then have them lie in the sun until they are cured. If you want to cure swollen eyes, the book says you can cut off the eyes of a live crab, then place the eyes against the patient's neck. But apparently, this only works if the blinded crab is returned to the water. Do you know of any strange ancient remedies that actually work? Tell us about them in the comments down below. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. Now, let's move on to number three. Number 3. Prehistoric Murder Mystery For as long as scientists have been studying human evolution, it was always assumed that the Homo genus, meaning Homo sapiens, Homo naledi, and Neanderthals, were the only intelligent creatures that were capable of creating tools. But now, all of that has changed. In early 2023, a group of researchers discovered stone tools from 3 million years ago in Kenya. The tools were likely used for butchering animals and working with plant material. Scientists say it's the oldest known example of a specific tool set crafted from stone. It would have been an innovation on the level of modern humans creating the first airplane. But surprisingly, it wasn't humans who made the toolkit. Excavations at the site discovered a pair of molars belonging to a creature called Paranthropus. Paranthropus was a homonym with a strong and muscular jaw, but it wasn't part of the Homo genus. It was basically an upright walking monkey. Even so, the new evidence proves that Paranthropus was using tools two million years before humans figured out how to make fire. They likely ate hippo and antelope meat raw, but they used stone tools to cut the meat and pound it into tartar so it was easier to chew. Number 2. Strange Carvings On a Swedish island, archaeologists recently uncovered 40 amazing rock carvings depicting animals, ships, and people. The carvings were etched into granite cliffs 2,700 years before today. The area is known for its ancient petroglyphs, but this find was unique in that the images were covered completely by a bed of moss. Moss had grown over the rocky outcrop, completely covering the petroglyphs. Archaeologists had to construct a platform to have better access to the cliffs. Then they carefully stripped away the moss. According to what the archaeologists said, the rock carvings are fascinating because they're located nine feet above ground level. But how in the world did anyone carve such intricate pieces of art nine feet above their head? It's because 2,700 years ago, the sea level was much higher. Researchers think the ancient artists arrived on the island by boat, carving the images from the edge of their vessel. They would have been hanging off the side of their boat with chisels and stones, chipping away at the cliffs to draw their pictures. The people responsible for the carvings were likely the ancient ancestors of the Vikings. From 4,000 years ago until 2,500 years ago, this part of Sweden was occupied by a mysterious group of mariners. They were excellent at building boats and living off the seas. They were also dedicated artists who documented their daily lives in thousands of rock carvings. All across Sweden's Bohusland province, there are petroglyphs of boats, whales, birds, and hunting scenes. They also drew scenes that appear to show ritual acts, which have proved a mystery to researchers. As for the new petroglyphs that were found under the moss, they include a massive 13-foot ship. Additionally, there are pictures of horses and chariots. The purpose of the images is unknown, though researchers have speculated they may have been used to mark property. It's possible that people came upon the island and drew pictures on it as a way of claiming it for themselves. Number 1. The Truth of Roman Gladiators At the Queensland Museum, they recently held an exhibition called Gladiators, Heroes of the Colosseum. The exhibition brought together 117 unique objects from museums in Italy, especially from the Colosseum in Rome. The exhibition contained things like gladiator helmets and pieces of armor that were discovered in Pompeii. But the exhibition has been widely controversial for its depiction of gladiators as elite athletes. The museum painted gladiators as if they were the ancient equivalent of modern MMA fighters. The truth about gladiators, however, is far less glamorous. Historians don't know everything about these ancient fighters. Some think they were athletic heroes who gained fame in the arena, but there isn't any proof of that. It's more likely that they weren't in the arena by choice. In fact, scientists say gladiators were on the lowest level of society. 
They were violent criminals, arsonists and murderers. The vast majority of gladiators were also prisoners of war, and many of them had already been sentenced to death, so they were sent into the arena to die. In truth, gladiators would have had more in common with someone like Charles Manson than David Beckham. While television dramatizes the life of gladiators and makes them seem like brave warriors in search of eternal glory, the evidence says otherwise. The facts show that those who participated in gladiatorial games did so forcibly or out of extreme desperation. What do you think being a gladiator was like? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.